Okay, could you please mm, tell me your name? Gordon Haller. Age? 62. Nationality? American. You, where do you live? I live in Arkansas, ben, in Bella Vista, Arkansas. And your profession? I am a computer programmer. Uh, when was your first Ironman? <laughs> February 18th, 1978. <laughs>it seemed like a natural thing to do. Um, I just heard about it when I came back to Hawaii. I'd been on the mainland for a couple months doing races and, and uh, I entered the Honolulu Marathon and dropped out because I shouldn't have tried another marathon so soon after my best marathon. And Where I stopped was near a friend of mine who uh, told me about a race they'd invented for me and when I heard what it was, uh, well I do that all the time anyway, I can do that. So once I saw the uh, notice in the paper asking for people interested in that. I answered it and went over there and helped them uh, organize it and that's how we got started. At first, not much, uh, because you know, 12 guys did a crazy thing in Hawaii, no big deal. Uh, and then there would be, like a, I think the only thing that we saw in magazines was at the end of Runner's World, there's like one little paragraph about it. It's like, and then the next year, there was an article in Sports Illustrated magazine, mm -hmm. and we still only had 15 people start that year. But after that magazine article came out about the race, the next year, we had 106 people start, and ABC broadcast the show. So then the next year, we had 356 people start, and then a couple of years later, they got their own, they used to put the Ironman as like one of the events on the wide world of sports. Mm -hmm. And now, or, well, then a few years later, they made it the only focus of Wide World of Sports. And then they got their own show of it that wasn't even Wide World, it was just Iron Man show. And each time the number of competitors went up, so uh, it, it just grew by leaps and bounds. And, and we had no idea way back in the beginning they were going to grow that fast or that people would be that fascinated with something that we just did because it seemed like something we could do. So it's been a really amazing journey. and. Almost everywhere I go, somebody will discover that I've done one first Ironman, and then they'll start telling their friends. And every time I move to a new job, it starts getting around. People start coming to see me, and like, all I did was do this race way back when, and, and it's like a major part of my life now. Everybody says, "Oh, this is Gordon. He won first Ironman." They don't just say, "This is Gordon," and, and call it good. They always have to throw that in there, and, and so it's been uh, just a huge impact on my life. Uh, and my kids are, that was my dad, the Iron Man, <laughs> stuff like that. So it's, it's really been quite a, a journey. Well, I was contacted by uh, Kenneth Gasky about five years ago, I guess, to come here. But, and I would like to have come, but I couldn't because I had a hip injury and, and uh, I ended up having a hip replacement surgery and by the time I got around to fixing that, I was way out of shape, so I decided I didn't want to come in that poor condition. So the last couple of years I've been getting back into it and competing well. Last year I was in the top three in all every triathlon I did, in my age group that is. And uh, so I thought, well, I can do that. So I started training a lot more this winter specifically for this, and I called mm -hmm. him up and said, uh, uh, we've been Facebook friends for a while, and I said, I think I can do it this year. And so uh, we made it happen. Yes, my wife and I traveled for 20 hours to get here. Well, that's a good question. The last one I did wasn't very fast, but I had a knee injury, so I hope to, I should be able to beat that one, but I, I'm kind of hoping to get around 14 and a half hours. Drowning. Drowning? That's, that's the water. That's the biggest fear of my life. Not necessarily in a race, but I just don't want to drown when I die. <laughs> I'd like to just drop dead at the end of the finish line after I cross it, rather than... Because I think the actual trying to breathe when you're... And you're still feeling okay, but you're underwater, that's terrible because you know what's happening. I and mean, if you just die like that, you don't, don't notice it, so it's no big deal. Except for your friends and family, but... Uh, Maybe that's a little selfish to think of it that way, but, but I'd rather not drown. It just seems too painful to me. So uh, that's my biggest fear in life.
for myself, that is. Obviously, I have fears for Maybe other people. That... Uh, one of the things that I do is just remember that I used to be able to do this. Um, sure, I'm getting older, but uh, my theory has always been that if you can do it once, you can do it again. And uh, the other theory is if you haven't done it yet, you probably can. You just have to train for it. And there's no reason why you can't. I mean, I've, I've seen an awful lot of, of uh, people who are paralyzed or amputees that uh, just make my problems seem really minuscule. There was a guy at the last Ironman I did in 2010 who had one arm, no legs, just one arm. And he was like 16 years old and he finished the Ironman. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so what excuse do I have? <laughs> Well, facetiously, I like to think, cheated death again. <laughs> but there's also the satisfaction that that's another one I did. I set the goal and, and completed it. And that's, I mean, I don't get, I don't do somersaults and jump up and down and cheer. I just think, okay, I did it. I set a, I set a goal and I, I did it. Did everything I had to do and it worked. So uh, um, I don't want to ever do an Ironman where I can't finish. Last Ironman I did, uh, like I said, my knee hurt, I had to walk the whole thing, and I just, every step hurt. I, I tried to run every once in a while, and, and it didn't work, so I just gave up and walked. And I met a lot of people out there, got to talk to people, got made some Facebook friends. Uh, I coached one guy who was doing his first Ironman, when he caught up with me, and, and he'd run away, and then he'd start to walk, and I'd catch back up with him, just walking. And he'd run, and, and he'd get tired and walk. And I said, just walk as fast as I do, and you'll do better than, because you're wasting energy running. Unless you can run from here to the end, just walk. So um, he did that for a while, then he had some friends come out there and he started running, and he ended up running to the end. So he did beat me, but he took my advice and figured out that that's what. So I got to meet a lot of people like that, and I really enjoyed that part, even though I had to kind of put the pain out of my mind. And, um, it was worth it.